Hey, hey how are you? Good. Oh, good. I had so much fun and uh, anxiety uh, watching a brand new cherry flavor. <laughs> Congratulations. Well, you're welcome and sorry. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, the poor kittens, but I know no cats were harmed in the making of this story. Poor kittens. <laughs> yes. Poor me. Hopefully. I think this is like KY jelly for like four months. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Shut up. <laughs> so, secrets so, coming in aware. <laughs> um, my first question for you both is just how did this project come into your lap and why did it call to you? Rosa, if you'd like to start. This fell into this didn't fall into my life. This is like burst through the atmosphere of my life. <laughs> um and I I read the first script and I just went like, yes. Um Nick and Tosca and Lenore Zion are, you know, these crazy minds that I just respect so much. Um, I love Channel Zero um, and I love I love them together. Mm -hmm. I also really, you know, in an age where everyone is sort of texting through content and just sort of like throwing something on in the background, I wanted something that would blast through all of that. The last thing I want to do is to make just like content for content's sake or just to take any job. I wanted to I wanted to do an art piece. And that's essentially what this is. Uh, I wanted something that whether you, you know, vibe with it or you don't, you're definitely not going to check your phone during the show. And that's what I wanted. I wanted a captive audience. And I think that we succeeded in that. Catherine? I definitely think that's true. <laughs> Catherine. I am. Um... I wanted a sympathetic character to play. <laughs> well, hmm. well, I begged her. I begged. I went over to her house and I was like, Catherine. <laughs> well, these guys, same Lenore and Nick. I mean, once you talk to them and hang out with them, they're just I don't know, out of this world. They're they're so bright and their writing is amazing. And I I honestly have to. This is no plug, but I got to hand it to Netflix for doing this show. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I mean, I don't mean it's an anti plug, but you know, it's cool. It's very cool. Um, I think it's different from what it's different from a lot of stuff and what people are doing now. And uh, I don't know. It had a lot of it had a lot of depth for being ostensibly a, I don't know what it is ostensibly. <laughs> I mean, what is right. it? But it's, uh, it definitely is. It felt like an art piece um, that we really had to commit a long time to. And so, you know, Rosa and I are, I know this because we're friends that we're very, uh, very keen on process being from being free with it and not being hampered by, the creative forces who have, have, you know, the showrunners and creators of this being um, kind of, a, you know, always, we're, what's the word? Somebody help me. It's like boxed in or? Well, there's no boxing at all. <laughs> Lots of sparring, but no, but antagonistic or just kind right, of always, right. always coming at us and mm -hmm. sort of, from a, an all-knowing perspective, I mean, we were all at sea the whole time. So <laughs> you're all just you're all discovering things together. Um, and I discovered that this this season or the show is like only sixty six pages of the whole novel. So right. and I'm like, how did that um, decision happen? Um, were you guys always planning to only do one limited series, and would you want to pursue Brazil? for Rosa, um, recovering Jennifer's body somehow for Catherine in the future. <laughs> well, I know she's in recovery. No. <laughs> I, I, I always want to revisit my, you know, my, the roles of the past. I think uh, I'm reminded of a Joan Didion quote where she says, we're, it's best to stay on nodding terms of the people that we used to be. And I feel the same way about the characters, you know, it's just like, oh, hey, you know, <laughs> like, there you are. Um, I always, I, I, I always feel like that. Uh, Lisa is, is very difficult, though. She is not your average chick. Um, <laughs> she is incredibly dynamic. And that's what really drew me to her. Um, 
I think that the story has this really nice bow on it, but obviously, I mean, to go back and revisit something is, is, is a pleasure. And I'm, mm-hmm. I would never, you know, uh, turn my nose up at, at the chance. Right. And we're always advocating for our characters, no matter what. I mean, we want to represent. So I think, you know, if, uh, if I feel something for this character, there's, you know, I always have her or him um, kind of held (laughs) close. Speaking of advocating for your character, I know that Boro in the book is very different from what we see on screen. And I heard you did a lot of work for them. So can you talk about inhabiting Boro and what you may have added to the character and her style? (laughs) Um, Well, uh, the style, I kind of saw her at this stage, I guessed, uh, them, I saw them as um, a cross kind of between Jimi Hendrix and Yoko Ono, <laughs> which what I thought was a really interesting mashup. Um, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I got help, trust me, all the time. Every day I was like, where am I and who am I? Um, so Kathy- the best style on the planet i have seen this woman's closet (laughs) she has the best style hands down thank you rose i mean look at you (laughs) yeah i mean yes you you are you are quite a fashionable lady this is true oh my goodness thank you very much (laughs) um but anyway (laughs) wait i want to go further into your question i just Mm -hmm. can't i got lost because of Rosa's, I know, throwing a curveball and stuff. What would say say again, please? Oh, so, so what work did you do to bring out the world that we saw on screen? Because it was very different from the original um, iteration in the novel. Right. Uh, well, I, I, they were very receptive. Everybody was very receptive to um, what whatever kind of. I mean, we had to argue the point. Trust me, it was not. It was not easy. It was. It had to make sense. Mm-hmm to them, but, uh, and they're very smart people. So the, the bar was pretty high and I got shut down a lot, but, um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, Rosa and I as a team can be, you know, somewhat formidable. And <laughs> as long as we made sense and, to, you know, didn't have a tanty, no, <laughs> we, you know, I don't know, Rosa, what do you think about that? How did it come across? I know one day, all of a sudden, I said to Rosa, she asked me something, and I go, yeah, I can. I'm fucking Boro. And so (laughs) so that became the kind of the quote. I'm fucking Boro, man. Um, I love (laughs) Everybody was Boro at some time. (laughs) I'm Boro. I'm (laughs) Boro, man. I know. Like, like the power within the Boro, the Boro within. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, Rosa, at the end, yeah. we, you know, we get to see Lisa connect with like the faceless woman that presumably is her mother um, and just the spirits in general that Boro has also been um, privy to. Can you talk a little bit about uh, Lisa's own connection to magic and where you think that stems from? Um, I think her, she, well, first of all, I think that she knows deep down inside that she has this ability, this power. Um, I don't know about ability, but power, something special. And I think that speaks to like, for instance, when you're an artist and you're like, I know I have something to offer. I know I can, I know I can do this. You know, I had that feeling when I was in, you know, when I was a, when I was a kid, it was like, I know I can, I have something to offer in this respect. And I think for Lisa, she knows that she has something to offer and she that's why she's so steadfast about making this film i know i can direct it i know i have only have a freshman attempt and it's a short film but i know i can make my feature length film. i know i can do that um but when you when you go further i think her magic comes from her estranged mother and i for me her mother has abandoned her, but I think it was a means of protection. Mm-hmm. I think that that her mother being close to her would have sent a flare up to them and <laughs> uh, would have endangered Lisa. Um, so th- there are, and there are parallels between Lisa and myself. 
you know, the story about the mother, about the magic coming from the mother uh, and, and having it being passed down. Um, I, I feel that way about my, my own mother, my own oh. mother quite formidable mm-hmm. my own mother actually passed during the filming of this show oh my so, goodness I'm so sorry it was layered so it, it it you know you can't you can't make this stuff up you can't plan life but it was it definitely informed a lot of those scenes where I am sort of reaching out to my mother in the story oh, that's that's amazing well you guys both did so well in this and amazing. I cannot wait to see what you guys do next thank you so much <laughs>